Hello everyone. Uh, today we will be going over some more advanced techniques uh, with the Force Vector Designer in No Limits 2. Now, uh, if you haven't seen my previous video yet, which is the basics on this technique, um, I would recommend you go back and watch that first, as that will cover a lot of the basics on this type of construction. And this is going to go into uh, more dimensions of how you can use this and why this is useful. So with Force Vector Designer, you get a uh, you get a much better ability to make curves, rolls, and precise hills. Whereas if you just use the traditional method of picking points and uh, connecting track, you'll get something that looks really really nice, but it takes longer and it doesn't look as natural. And it's also worth noting that force vector design is what uh, the professionals use when they're creating roller coasters. So if you see modern steel coasters these days, all of that is done with a similar technique to using this. Now we're going to be using the inbuilt force vector designer again, so I'll just call that FVD for now, um, which is also what the program calls it, but what we're going to try to do is we have a launch coaster here and as you can see the launch speed is 65 miles per hour so that means at the end of this launch run the train should be going about 65 miles per hour give or take uh, so as I mentioned force vector design is really good for doing unique elements so as you know No Limits 2 comes with a lot of pre-built elements and you can find them in the add element tab and you got your normal stuff of your cover roll, vertical loop. The left and right formulas are actually pretty useful for doing uh, straight turns because if you want to build a coaster quickly and you don't want to muck around with getting a nice straight curve by placing down points manually, you can use those. But let's try to do something a little bit more interesting. So I usually like to just use Force Vector Designer and see where it kind of takes me but you can kind of have a plan going in here and then just uh, use force vector designer as a starting point but for now we're going to do more of a hill leading into some kind of inversion and from there go to uh, go to whatever crosses our mind so first off another very important step you do have to set the mode to uh, heartline of co current coaster style now I know there was kind of a debate with the wing coaster that the heartline isn't quite right so if you're of that opinion you can hit uh, you can hit a custom center of rails and fix that but for our purposes the heartline of the current type should be fine so we'll hit that and you'll notice the track kind of jumps down a little bit so now we're going to go back to the force vector designer and start from there so let's kind of set a starter hill right here so you'll notice that speed is 65 here that's because I preset it to 65 normally it will default it will default to 62.5 miles per hour and that can be a bit of a pain if you're doing some low speed work and you forget to check that and you're wondering why you can't do tight turns and then you look down there and you see oh I forgot to set the speed so setting the speed is really important it just happens that the default speed for this would have actually probably worked pretty well but so we have our hill here now uh, as I mentioned in the last video, you want to be careful with your vertical g-force and also something new, you want to be very careful with your lateral g-force that you apply on the train. So vertical g-force, uh, an acceptable range would probably kind of be represented here with the exception that anything significantly below negative 1g would kind of be pretty painful for the riders. I know airtime or airtime is technically negative 1g but if you go too far below that you can start getting into the issue of too much force and it doesn't really make for a good ride for the positive side 
it really depends what you're going for. If you're going for like a, a family coaster, I would say stick within the 1 to 2G range. Now, 1G is obviously being completely dead flat, and let's represent that here. As you can see, completely dead flat, nothing going on there whatsoever. Um, now, if we were to set that up to 5Gs, you'll notice it's a really, really tight turn, and what you're seeing here is actually a result of the force vector designer not knowing what to do once the train stalls out or once the roll hits vertical and all hell breaks loose so a safe range to keep that in is probably from negative 1.5 on the very limit to about 4 safely uh, it's not a good idea to have periods of sustained 4Gs, that's when you get into the blackout zone. So a good example of this was Intimidator 305. Uh, it hit some serious Gs at the bottom of that first drop to the point where a lot of people would black out. Uh, hence they modified it a few seasons after it opened. I actually wrote it before they modified it and it was, you came pretty close to blacking out. So, make sure you stick within your bounds in terms of the G-forces. So, since this is a launch coaster, you can get away with some high Gs. It's, a, it's expected to be kind of an intense ride. So, for the, for the first hill, I would say 4 Gs is acceptable for a short period of time. And look at this. You'll notice how you get a really, really nice curve. Um, this is something that you can easily do with a force vector designer that you can't normally do by placing points and just hitting depump a ton of times I mean you can get close but this is a much more natural curve and you have math on your side basically verifying that the forces are going to be tolerable they're going to be smooth and the track is going to look really nice and smooth once you get it going so let's create that we got a nice nearly vertical hill there so that's going to be used in just a sec and now you'll notice that all of our G forces are pretty much okay. Um, there is some yellow there. I wouldn't worry too much about that just because it's a launch coaster. That type of force is kind of expected. If you've ever ridden Storm Runner or King to Ka, you'll know that in that bottom turn you're getting a lot of force pushed down on you. So let's go up here and the next element, and this is where Force Vector Designer gets pretty neat, you'll notice that. The, spark, the start speed has changed. This is because Force Vector Designer is pretty smart and it can determine from where you last left off what the speed is going into the element. So that's one of the advantages in that it saves you a lot of time kind of mucking about, oh, what's the speed here? I mean, you can go into the speed comb and verify that, but it'll basically be spot on for your purposes. So let's go back to G-Force Comb. All right, now, here's one of the slight limitations of Force Vector Designer. Doing vertical elements is pretty hard. Like, if you're to try to do a straight vertical turn, it's somewhat difficult. And you'll find this with a lot of the Force Designer programs, uh, mostly because at a certain point, the train's going to stall, which basically means it stops and rolls back. So you see here, uh, vertical spline stall at one minute for uh, at 1.4 seconds so that means we have to have some period of negative G's to kind of work us over the top here and make sure that the coaster car isn't going to basically stop it might actually need to be a bit alright so now the way this is working is it looks like we're going to get a nice period of negative G's over the top so we loop that down a little bit so you can you can adjust this kind of at will and you'll get whatever curve you want really it's just a matter of basically choosing what type of element you want and going from there so Also, worth noting, this type of coaster construction does take a little work to get used to. It's not something that you can pick up right away, hence why I'm making these tutorials, just to kind of make it a little easier to understand. So, 
That looks a little, that still looks a little too sharp, so we're gonna normalize, they're gonna level that out a little bit. Alright, now that looks like a reasonable element that this type of train would do. Obviously, if you're working with different types of coasters, they're gonna be a bit more flexible. Um, a good example is the Eurofighter style. In real life, they have those trains doing pretty crazy things, so you can get away with some pretty crazy elements. But that looks pretty good, I would say. So, now you'll notice a little bit of airtime there at the top, and then you basically get a flat top. So, what that's going to represent from a speed standpoint, you'll basically get a night a decent kick of speed at the top with some really good floater airtime. Let me see if I can bring that up on the bottom there. One of the tricks with this, oops, one of the tricks with this is you have to kind of, alright, so 14 miles per hour over the top, that's completely acceptable, that should give us a nice little kick but also be within the realm of comfort for g-forces so that's a pretty nice element now um, I covered vertical force vector design in the last video the uh, once you get once you start getting into horizontal elements and rolls it gets a little bit trickier